Good afternoon. I am Alexandre Hara, the Academic Coordinator of the Brazilian Center for Studies on International Business and Corporate Diplomacy at ESPM. We are starting another edition of Asia in the Banshee, an interview program promoted by the Nucleus for Asian Studies and Business, coordinated by me and Professor Hannah King. Good afternoon, Professor Hannah. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Uh, Nena is one of the four CBNEGIC Nucleus for International Business Studies. The three other ones is Nucleus, uh, Nenan, which is related to the Americas, Nene, related to Europe, and Nenon, which is devoted to research issues related to Middle East. Sebeni GIC was structured for the development of uh, activities involving professors and students to contribute to improvement of knowledge and various aspects that can influence international business in the regions and in their respective countries. Our interviews can be seen on video on the YouTube page named Corporate Diplomacy and Global Business. Well, today we have a special participation here of Professor Leonardo Aureliano. He is, uh, he is prof as professor at the ASPM, teaching courses in the field of marketing uh, and at Yuma University, Pakistan, where he conducts scientific research and supervises PhD, masters, and undergraduate students in the development of their thesis, dissertations, and courses conclusive works. He has worked as a revisor, re review, and author of scientific research for national and international journals. Good afternoon, Professor Leonardo. Good afternoon, Professor Hara. Thank you very much for the opportunity. It is a great pleasure to be here with you and with Professor Hanna. Thank you so much. It's our pleasure. And we have the honor to talk with Professor uh, Mr. Bihani, uh, Dean of Faculty of Management Sci Science Business School and Director of Postgraduate Studies Research at Yuma University in Pakistan. The idea of our conversation today is to address some aspects of the country, its people and the culture, and potential academic collaborations between Brazil and Pakistan. Mrs. Bihani, it's my privilege and great pleasure on behalf of ESPM Sao Paulo to welcome you to our program today. Uh, now I give the floor for Professor Leonardo, please. Hello, Professor Dr. Subhani. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Oh, what's wonderful. It's a great pleasure to be here with such wonderful, not colleagues, but friends with Professor Uehara, Professor Hanna, and our special guest, Professor Subhan. Professor Subhan is the Dean and Director of Ilma University, and we are eager to learn about your country, about your culture, and the method of teaching <coughs> at your university. Professor Subhani, thank you very much for your, your time. And we are very honored to hear from, from you, as you usually say, Alhamdulillah, thank you so much. We will we ask thank you thank some you. few questions and you can feel sure. very, very comfortable to share your perspective, your view about these topics, okay? Sure. Okay. Um, in international relation, one of the most important things that we usually discuss is about the government. And uh, we know right. something about Pakistan. And uh, during a large time, we have focused much more on other countries, America or other continents. But now we want to learn about Pakistan and Asia. Tell a little bit about your government in your country, how it works. Please. All right. Uh, all right. This is Dr. Subhani here. Thank you very much for the nice introduction. Dr. Nardo, you have given me an opportunity to talk on the topic. In fact, we have mentioned and your introduction. <clears throat> uh, obviously, 
Pakistan is the um, democratic country. Uh, it is Islamic Republic of Pakistan. And we have four provinces and one federal capital city, that is Islamabad. Uh, provinces are basically uh, Sindh, where I am being located, then the Punjab, then the KPK, and then the Balochistan. That's nice to learn that Pakistan is a democratic country. And how, how do you see the potential of economy regarding Pakistan to to the the world, but I will pass right. the the world to Means Professor Hana. Major economic research. activities that are being performed at this city yourself, and this city is also basically the education corridor. Uh, I, I must say. Further, uh, if if uh, I'll elaborate uh, the. Uh, on the education system of Pakistan. So we have uh, approximately more than 250 uh, universities. Those are basically the government owned universities and private sector universities working in this country. And uh, most of the, uh, the universities, they are basically uh, pretty well research oriented universities. And uh, those are working uh, really a fantastic, uh, giving the fantastic contribution for the country uh, in terms of research and development. Nice to learn that. I am basically, yeah, I am basically uh, uh, belonging to to Ilma University, and this university is also located in Pakistan, in country Pakistan. Uh, this university is, uh, uh, as per the Times Higher Education Ranking, number one in Sindh and number three in Pakistan. Right. Uh, yeah, and uh, I'm serving for the business school as the Dean Business School at Ilma University, as well as the Director of Postgraduate Studies. Besides this, uh, uh, the, I'm also the Ambassador for DHA, Director of Open Access Journals for South Asia. Okay. Uh, this, so this is the little intro about my country, education system, and about me. Yes. That's interesting to learn about this. And Professor uh, Hanna, would you like to ask something about uh, the economy or some other issue there? Yeah, I, I want to ask about the business environment in Pakistan. Uh, how is the business environment about the import, export or the international companies working in this country? Can you tell us uh, something about this, the uh, business all environment right, in right, Pakistan? Uh, all right. Uh, you know, basically, uh, Pakistan is the agricultural uh, country. So our basically GDP is relying most, uh, mostly on the agricultural products. So the, if you could see uh, the statistics, so statistics says the, uh, the most uh, contribution of the GDP of Pakistan is basically provided by the agriculture sector. We have uh, the crop, uh, we have the crops like wheat, rice, uh, sugarcane. These are the major crops of Pakistan. And we are doing fantastically uh, good, uh, despite of actually uh, various, uh, you know, the natural disasters which are coming uh, uh, after every two, three years or so. Uh, this year, uh, basically, you know, uh, the, the, the whole world knows uh, the natural disaster, which is uh, the flood has attacked Pakistan, especially uh, the province of Sindh. So uh, the crops like uh, rice, uh, wheat, sugarcane, they uh, are affected so badly. Uh, but again, you know, uh, the GDP since uh, relies more on, on these agriculture products and agriculture sector. So yes, I believe that this time uh, the, the contribution from the sector to the GDP would be not that sufficient as it is normally in the normal years. So, uh, as mentioned earlier, uh, the Karachi city is the, is the economical hub. So we have in the city all the, uh, the, the major uh, multinationals and the national companies uh, from the pharmaceutical 
uh, of vicinities. Uh, Pulse Hacker is also working here. So the FMCG uh, products uh, com producing companies is also basically in fact located in this city. So this city is basically uh, the major economical hub of Pakistan where we have as mentioned uh, the textile industry, uh, the food industry, the pharmaceutical industry, uh, the fish industry, uh, even the education industry. So we have uh, the all, all major industries, in fact, they are being located in the city of Karachi. And Karachi is also located, uh, uh, you know, uh, it, it's, uh, I, I should say it's, it's a beach city. So it is, it has, uh, uh, you know, the, now we have the sea here and uh, so all the basically and the fish industry basically they are uh, being promoted to, and they are being actually uh, nurtured by the presence of this uh, ocean so yeah i i should say uh, if, if you are actually coming to pakistan so you should see uh mandatorily a city to actually understand exactly pakistan yes Yes. Thank you. Professor Hara, you mm -hmm. have uh, some question. Yeah. Uh, thank you for uh, your comments, Professor. Uh, like you mentioned before about the, the flooding in Pakistan this year. Uh, can you explain if it, this is normal or, I mean, uh, it's happened every year or this year's uh, a different uh, situation uh, and how the population <laughs> Is facing this this uh, natural disaster this year. Uh, you know, uh, uh, this disaster it uh, does not normally basically attacks to Pakistan every year. But uh, the last time the major disaster the country faced in 2010, and uh, after 10 12 years in this 2022, uh, we faced uh, uh, in the. I, I should say it, it it devastated the whole whole country, not only the one province, but the whole country, because uh, the the statistics says and uh, the ground realities also says that this disaster has affected the eighty percent of the province have sent, uh, not in terms of uh, uh, the families, uh, the inhabitants living in Karachi city. Uh, but also the uh, trades in which they're involved in, like as I as mentioned earlier, the uh, province of Sindh is famous for uh, agriculture production. So all crops, uh, as mentioned before, they are being affected heavily by this disaster. And uh, yes, uh, the last time uh, this disaster arrived into 2010, but uh, after 10, 12 years. Uh, again, we have the major disaster, and the people says, and the stats says uh, that this disaster uh, uh, is uh, the bigger one than 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 before. Means in 2010 we had a big disaster, but it is the biggest one. Can, can you yes. relate to this kind of uh, uh, natural disaster with the climate? Climate change, or or do you think do, do you yes, think you know, to... basically. The, Yes, yes, you're you're very right. You're, uh, you know, the global warming is uh, in the world, so we are also basically facing a lot of rains, a uh, lot of. Uh, in, uh, 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 I, I I should say, uh, you, you must have seen the UAE and uh, uh, Saudi Arabia. They are basically uh, affected heavily, in fact, by the uh, the global warming. And same happened with Pakistan because of the global warming. We have uh, on season and off season rains. Uh, a lot and uh, this then paved the way for the flood and the flood uh, basically destroyed the infrastructures the crops the the low types roads the high type roads the, in short the uh, livings of the uh, families and the uh, people of pakistan in general yes and and can you see if it uh, inform us if a country is receiving uh, aid for other countries or uh, yeah, yeah. Some obviously, uh, mm -hmm. 
-hmm. Yes, obviously, the whole world is basically giving the aids and the support and the help in terms of sending um, the, uh, whatever they required, in fact, by the uh, affected people, uh, which are basically the food, medicines, uh, um, and of course, uh, uh, the clothes, etc. So uh, we are very thankful the whole world is basically giving the help and the aids, in fact, to, to us uh, to basically address and to uh, count down the effect of this natural disaster and to serve the uh, affected people. Yes. Okay. Okay, we know that you have um, many stakeholders involved in these cases. Um, government and also universities. Uh, could you share with us how or what is the role of universities in supporting people at risk during this hard moment? You know, uh, we are not only relying on the foreign aids uh, to address uh, this natural disaster and serving the humanity, but basically, in fact, from uh, inside uh, our universities, colleges, schools, they, they are also, in fact, collecting the donations uh, uh, in terms of money, in terms of clothes, in terms of medicines, in terms of foods. And they are being actually, in fact, uh, disseminated. And these all basically helps. They are disseminated, in fact, to all um, uh, far-reaching places, even uh, the ones that the, the, the people, they, normally the people, they cannot actually reach, in fact, but the, our universities, they are actually, in fact, reaching those people uh, to provide them what they are basically required, uh, especially the food and the medicines. Nice, very nice. Yeah, we have lived our times after coronavirus pandemic and now flooding but um, I turn this talk in a positive thinking now and I'd like to know more things about your culture how Pakistani identified themselves with Brazilians and uh, of course how we can cooperate with each other in terms of academic uh, developments and, of course, students' exchange? You know, uh, uh, Pakistani culture is, uh, you know, uh, the very famous uh, culture. Uh, it, uh, it has roots uh, with the Aryan culture and uh, at the end of the Aryan culture is a very, very famous and very, very old cultures, and it, it has roots with it. And uh, uh, the culture of the, of the heritage of Pakistan, uh, the, which includes uh, Mahinjadaro, uh, Harappa, Taxila, uh, Makli Graveyard, um, these are all basically, in fact, explaining uh, uh, our rich. Uh, Culture and all rich heritage which we have. Now, uh, uh, if 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 you're actually asking uh, uh, how we can actually uh, collaborate, in fact, with Brazil. So I, I before actually addressing and before answering this question, uh, I would say one thing. Uh, I have mentioned uh, to all of my Brazilian colleagues that. Uh, the people of Pakistan heart uh, basically always uh, beats with uh, uh, the soccer team of Brazil. Uh, whenever uh, there is uh, the World Cup, the FIFA World Cup of soccer, so uh, it's not just my opinion. I believe, in fact, 90%, 95% of Pakistani people, they're always actually at the back of Brazilian footballers. <laughs> so we always love to... Uh, see in uh, uh, Brazilian soccer, uh, uh, footballers playing fantastic games and when we actually play um, that who is going to win the World Cup so uh, my vote and like me many other colleagues um, our all votes are basically for the Brazilian football team soccer Thank you team very so much. Um, <laughs> yeah and, and whenever and whenever the Brazilian uh, they uh, win the World Cup 
So it, it feels like that we actually won the World Cup. So it's, it's, it's something, in fact, the affinity, the close affinity we have through this uh, a game of soccer with the, uh, with the, with the uh, Brazilian people and Brazil. I, I can say so, that I, I'm especially a fan of Pakistan cricket team as well. They were cha they were champion, right, at last year. Yeah, that's wonderful. Yes, same, and, and, and same, we, same same sentiments same sentiments we have for the Brazilian soccer team. Yeah, very nice, very nice. Any question? Uh, I think it, this year we have World Cup, and we will need much much. Uh, support of you <laughs> and your country to give some yes i i i, would, some I would love to participate i would love to participate i i when, when you know in fact uh, you have in your uh, the, uh, brazilian soccer team the player like ronaldo ronaldinho uh, uh rivaldo uh, so in those days i was uh, basically just entered in the academia and i love to see in fact ronaldo rivaldo ronaldinho playing a fantastic game of soccer and uh, in those days, the Kaká was basically the new entry uh, in, in the team. And uh, now, in fact, uh, uh, I had a talk with uh, one of my Brazilian friends, uh, and he was saying that all oh, big shots, they're not uh, anymore, in fact, in the soccer team. But Neymar is basically playing <laughs> these days as, as the, as the uh, in fact, the main player and the main, main figure of, of the uh, Brazilian soccer team. So, but anyways, my all wishes, my all prayers are with Brazilian uh, soccer team, and I always love to see them to play the good game. And uh, I believe, in fact, this World Cup. Uh, uh, if you'll ask me that who's going to win the World Cup, so my vote number one is for the Brazil. Okay. Well, as I'm not a good football player, soccer player, I want to return to uh, academic relation and exchange. Sure. Uh, sure. Yes. 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 <laughs> Do, can you give us some idea about uh, how often uh, you receive uh, yeah. Brazilian yes, students, yes. a professor in your country or university? Yes, professor. Yes, professor. I, I would, I would say here, uh, as mentioned in in my uh, little intro, that I am basically the ambassador for South Asia from the platform of uh, Director of Open Access Journal. Uh, so, uh, my role is basically to actually uh, promote the uh, uh, DHA initiatives uh, uh, in terms of open access uh, uh, publishing, in terms of open science, in terms of uh, uh, open access scholarly communications. So, um, we can uh, the collaboration in fact in, especially in terms of uh, scientific publishing and uh, uh, open access uh, uh, scholarly communication we can do uh, this way that we can basically in uh, jointly uh, arrange and organize the, the conferences uh, which uh, are from the platform of the UAJ on open access uh, scientific communication or open science maybe uh, so a few of the, uh, the uh, your university maybe or my university maybe in fact can collaborate and actually organize a conference uh, to, to promote the agenda of uh, scholarly communication and open science in the region. Uh, this is one uh, uh, the, uh, step we can actually take uh, in terms of uh, collaborate, collaborations with each other. Further, uh, I believe uh, we can do the, some joint projects uh on on maybe in uh, the, uh, the various uh, heart issues such as uh, uh, the role of uh, wikimedia in in in, uh, in, in giving the uh, the free education the free knowledge in fact to to the poor and to the needy uh, the families maybe this way if we can actually do something and collaborate with each other and uh, further uh, uh, i believe uh, uh, we can also in, uh, produce uh, some joint publications. Uh, um, so, so this way we can also actually contribute uh, uh, and we can actually work together uh, in terms of uh, collaborative arrangements. Further of uh, this, uh, you can take me uh, the, uh, from the platform of DOAJ uh, on talk uh, specifically on open science and uh, open access uh, scholarly publishing 
So this, these, these are basically, in fact, few uh, points uh, which are there in my mind uh, through which we can actually collaborate. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. So uh, I'm very curious about the challenges that students usually face when they go to university in Pakistan. As I have taught there for almost two years, that is an honor for me. Dr. Subhani, in your view, what are the greatest challenges that students from Pakistan face during their academic life? Yeah, actually, I, I you know, basically, uh, 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 Pakistan is a country uh, where, uh, the, which is comprised on uh, not well off people. Um, so the students, in fact, they're from, they are basically, even if they're actually going for schools, right, if they're going colleges or uh, higher education sector or universities or so. So they are basically, in fact, from the mediocre family. And uh, they hardly afford uh, the price of uh, uh, getting education. So um, this is the, in fact, challenge number one, the Pakistani students they're facing. Um, so if uh, 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 you're asking uh, what other challenges the students are actually facing besides the, basic, uh, the, uh, the challenge of financial affordability, so I would say, um, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, for actually being connected for this interview, uh, uh, my I have uh, with me three actually devices. But uh, then, uh, after a very big effort, then I, I was able to be connected, in fact, uh, with you guys to, to actually uh, share my thoughts on the proposition of the day. Uh, same uh, uh, challenge basically is being faced by. Uh, the uh, the various uh, stakeholders of education, uh, specifically students, uh, in in the COVID time, uh, the, the when uh, the, the students they were uh, not actually in fact going physically to their classes, uh, universities, uh, and they were asked to actually sit at home and actually take classes uh, and give quizzes, uh, give uh, exam exams, etc. And uh, and because of uh, uh, no availability of uh, the smart technology with uh, uh, in, in the access of these rooms, uh, no access of the internet or the not of the internet. Basically, these are the few challenges. In fact, uh, the students they faced in uh, current last two years. Nice. Uh, obviously, uh, the. the uh, in Karachi city, in, uh, this problem was not actually so vis visible, but uh, in the other part of this, like uh, the uh, interior Sindh or maybe a few city of the Brochistan, uh, I had a talk with the professors. So I found uh, this uh, a big, big, big challenge. In, uh, the, uh, when actually I, when I asked the same questions uh, uh, to my uh, few professors uh, from the Balochistan University, so they were saying the the biggest challenge uh, students are facing that they don't have the laptop with them, they don't have the internet access with them, and they were asked to sit at home and actually take classes and give examinations. So this is the biggest challenge. In fact, the I universities the students are basically facing. These. Even, even, that. even, you know, of course, the COVID is still not over. In few of the universities, still the classes are online, and when the, when the classes are online, so you know, uh, the students need to have laptop, internet access, and when you don't have these kind of access, then of course, this is a challenge. I understand. Um, I will pass the word for Professor Hanat for the last question. Mm -hmm. Professor. Sure. Can you tell us uh, some quality about the Pakistani students? Because we are uh, looking for these challenges, but they are very, how can I, resisting to study. And can you tell us about the characteristics uh, or qualities about the Pakistani students? See, uh, uh, Professor, uh, I, I should say the, uh, the, the, the best quality of Pakistani students uh, can be categorized into two categories. Number one is the IQ level is very, very high. Uh, the, the, if uh, you're taught, if, if you're teaching uh, something, 
So in comparison of the, uh, the other students uh, uh, from the world, they cash stuffs uh, so quickly. So the IQ level is very high, number one. And number two, uh, the Pakistani students, uh, uh, I should say, uh, they're very hardworking. And uh, when they are actually going to the universities and the colleges and schools, they really want to learn something and they really want to contribute for the humanity. They really want to contribute for their families in, in general. Yes. Okay, thank you, Dr. Subihani. And uh, now no, our time is ending, but I'm delighted to see you all here in this special time to discuss and learn more about Pakistan. Thank you very much, Professor. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Thank you, Dr. Leonardo. Thank you very much. Thank you, Brazil. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Hanna, Professor Leonardo. Thank you. Thank you so much. And my special thanks to the teacher, Subihani, in Pakistan and our thank you, audience thank you. in Brazil. See you all in next program. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you very much. Allah Hafiz. Doctor Subhani, can you hear me? Doctor? Yes, I am. Okay, okay. <laughs> the program has ended. Uh, thank you so much for your time. We are very happy. Sir, thank you very much. And I'm extremely sorry that my technology was not supporting me, to me oh. but I had two, three, three devices with me to Cut. actually get connected with you. But anyways, I'm literally very sorry. Cut bad uh, nehi. No problem. <laughs> okay, that's wonderful. No problem. That's you wonderful. see, thank I'm you. learning thank Urdu. And it, it has yes. been no, very it, special to be here with Professor Wehara. Professor Hanna, my best friends, one of my best friends here at ESPN. Uh, I, we also have the wonderful support of Afonso. Afonso. Afonso is a technic, that uh, really technical, that is Ari. helping us Ari, here. Thank you. And we hope the, the best from my side. Bahat Shukriyan, Pakistan. Uh, thank you yes, very much. Yes, and uh, uh, much. Maybe, maybe maybe I'll be visiting in Factor Brazil in the coming year, maybe January, February. Wow. So I'll love you to are... visit your university. Yeah. Y yes, you are very welcome, Professor yes, Hara. Yes, yeah, you're very welcome. We will hope you receive you here, of course. Yes, Professor Hana. Thank you for the thank you, thank you interview. very much. Thank you really so much. Okay, thank you, doctor, thank you. doctor, thank you so so much. Thank you. It so was nice. a wonderful, thank wonderful you, so time. Nice. Take care, Allah thank Hafiz. You, okay. Allah Hafiz. Thank bye bye. You. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.